Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video I'm going to cover the Engine API as part of Sugarcube 2.0. In Sugarcube, the Engine API gives easy access to the history of passages and what is currently going on in the engine of the story. So what is the engine doing? So we can query the engine to figure out if it's rendering, if it's idle, or if it's playing. And in this case we can figure out the status of the engine, here rendering, ask if we're idle, we aren't, if we're playing, we are, or if it's rendering something, and it is. And we'll look at that code here in just a few moments. And time travel? Is it possible? Through using engine backward and engine forward, we can move through the history of the story, undoing or redoing moments, sometimes thought of as turns, as recorded by the engine itself. And in fact, let's go back a passage. And as you see, we've gone back a passage, and it's recorded within the history Moving forward, we can even rewind a number of turns or return to a moment previously in the history through using engine go and then an offset number or engine go to and its index within the history. For example, the very beginning of the story would be index 0 for the very beginning. And offset, we could go forward or back using either positive or negative numbers for the offset of whatever that is. So let's return to the very beginning of the story and we'll save all of our current navigation history by using engine go to in an index of zero. So we start back at the beginning of the story. Notice how with these arrows we have a history so we can go forward because we've already gone forward in the story and in fact we can return to the current forward marker as our progression through the story which is right here where we started before we went back. We can also show or play a moment through using engine play and then the name of a passage within the story and then the option to record it as part of the history or not and supplying the name of the passage like I just said in the story and if we want to add it to the history. Finally, if we really want to, although it is not recommended, we can restart everything with engine restart. An engine restart erases our history, erases our variables, and basically completely restarts everything in the story from scratch. So we can do it. And now we're right back where we were. The history has been erased, the variables have been erased, and we started right back at the beginning passage at where we were. Notice we can verify that where the history is completely gone. We can't go anywhere because as far as the story knows, we never have, and we've restarted completely. Now let's go look at the code for this. So within the start passage, I have a link to the exact documentation for the engine, as well as a link to another passage, what is the engine doing? So as I mentioned, we can query the engine to see different things. The first is which is see its current state. Now remember, we saw it was rendering, which is what it was. It was showing us something. So we can ask, is it idle? And it wasn't. Is it playing, and we, we, we were, where we're playing something, or is it rendering, and in fact it was rendering when it got there? And time travel? Let's go look at that passage. So as I mentioned, engine backward, or engine forward, sends you either backward or forward, through time as recorded by the engine. And here I had a button macro wrapped around a script macro, and within the script macro had engine backwards, and in fact we went back a passage as recorded by the engine. Now remember, if you use other functionality, like engine play, like I mentioned, and use the option to not record something, you can effectively not have it part of the history, which is where engine backward and engine forward just work on whatever was recorded in the history of the story. The same with the offsets and the indexes. So we can rewind turns and return to a moment, but only if it exists within the history, which means it was somehow recorded. And as I mentioned here, we used, it in, we used engine go to in zero. Zero was the index value passed to this and was the first passage, the zero passage. We could have also used go and an offset using either negative to go backwards or positive to go forwards, assuming we can, in within the, history, within the recorded history of the story. Finally, as I mentioned, we can call engine restart and it will restart everything and erase our history and erase, or erase our variables and completely restart everything. Now again, it's really not recommended to use engine restart unless you're warning the player that you're doing that. 
Now if we look at the UI bar as per the sugar group, notice there is a reset button over here. And in fact it does the same thing. However, notice it warns the player, which you should probably do as well if you're presenting this option to the player of something you want to do. Make sure they know that if they restart, it erases any unsaved progress and everything else. In fact, we click OK, it achieves the same result, because it calls the same function. So engine restart is a clean restart. However, we don't want that. We can do this, go to zero, or an offset to go back to that and keep our current navigation history, our history through the story otherwise. But using the engine API, we can look at what the engine's currently doing. Is it idle? Is it playing? What's its state? Is it rendering? as well as time travel, in a way, backwards and forwards as recorded in the history of the session using engine backwards and engine forward. We can also go to offsets and indexes using go for offsets and go to for indexes as part of the story. We can also erase everything and restart if we really want to using engine restart. Thanks for watching.